we've talked quite a bit about cones in the past. These cones that were the actual photoreceptors and that had pigments inside to be able to pick up different types of colors. And we said that, for example, uh, humans are trichromatic, which means they can see three different colors. In this case, tri for the humans means red, green, and blue, because they have three different types of cones, one that can detect each color. That's for humans. But it's also important to know that actual different animals have different types of cones, which means they see different types of colors. A good example would be the bee, which obviously is an example of an insect. The bee also has trichromatic vision, right? So trichromatic vision just means they have three cones. But if you look at the actual colors of their cones, it's different. Right? So they have green like we have, they have blue like we have, they don't have red, but they have ultraviolet. So this is meant to be ultraviolet. So they have an ultraviolet receptor, a blue receptor, and a green receptor. But that means they see different types of colors that we can't see. And some of our colors that we see, they can't see. So basically, it's even though we have trichromatic vision, the type of vision we have is different to humans. Right? So this is what humans see when you look at this picture. A nice red here, because we've got the red receptor. Whereas the same flower in a bee looks different, because they don't have a red receptor, but they have more the blue or the violet one. So it looks more violet than our human vision does because we can't see it. All right, so birds are a good example because birds, much of their communication, they don't use um, scent, so they don't use the idea of smell to be able to communicate with other people, or not other people, but other birds, whereas other animals often do. So they need to have really good vision to be able to communicate. So much of their communication happens by vision, which is why they're so colorful. But they have tetrachromatic. Tetra means four, so they actually have four receptors. And the types of receptors they have, receptors they have is red, green, blue, and ultraviolet. Right? So they have a red, green, blue. These are like the ones that humans have. So this is your human kind of spectrum. And then they have a, often have an additional one, which is a UV receptor. So they can see more colors than we can. Right? An example would be here. This is what certain birds would see. When you look at a certain bird, really colorful, right? But that same bird, when we look at it, it looks more blackish. Right? And that's because the birds have different types of color vision. They have more color vision. They have more receptors. So they see more different colors that we can't. But that's important because we have all a, a different function for our eyesight. The reason why I'm mentioning this is because Dot Point says students will process and analyze information from secondary sources to describe and analyze the use of color for communication in animals and relate this to the occurrence of color vision in animals. So I've done this first part. I've related the occurrence of color vision in animals. I've, I've told you that most animals, not all, but most animals see in color and they have different types of color visions depending on the animal. And that's because they have different types of roles that these visions play in their life. Right? And that's some of them I'll go over now. Example would be the peacock, right? The peacock is a bird. I've covered it in a couple of videos past already. But the peacock is this bird and has these really nice feathers. But the role of the feathers is what's important. Remember, a peacock is a bird, which means it has tetrachromatic vision, which means it can see four colors, different colors. So it's got a very colorful eyesight. And it uses, so we see these different feathers. The actual bird might see, it, like the, when the bird looks at this feather, it might see a different type of pattern. So there's different types of cones but the main point of these different feathers is that it can attract a mate so it can um, get a mate a different bird so by attracting mate I mean um, having offspring having babies right so having babies if a female bird looks at these feathers it might it might tell the female that this bird has good fertility it might have good chances of, of making offspring it might be healthy it blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like it just, it just tells the actual female bird that this bird is a good partner, right? Um, whereas other animals use different types of techniques. The peacock has chosen vision, right? So vision as its most common way of attracting a mate. Whereas sometimes, for example, scent, so smell would attract certain animals to other animals. But because the peacock relies mostly on the vision, Therefore, its mechanism for attracting a mate is obviously its nice, colorful um, tail. And another thing that it can do with the actual tail or feathers is it can scare off predators, right? So usually when it will walk around, you can see it in the back, there's one in the back. 
it doesn't actually have these ones. It'll be there B, they'll be like that as opposed to all the way up. But if there's a predator that comes, something that tries to eat it, you can stick it up to scare off the predator. Right? So that's again a way of visual communication to that predator. It, can, it, tell, it tells it go away, otherwise you're in trouble. Like I will, I'm aggressive, you look at me and my big feathers. Right? Um, so these are two ways that it can use actual feathers for communication. And that's visual communication in peacocks. And that's one example of birds, but most birds use quite a bit of vision for their communication because they have such good vision for the reason of communication. Right? So without that, they wouldn't be able to communicate with one another. They do have sound as well, so they use sound and vision mostly. Right, bees. Bees are obviously insects, and we said insects, in this case, the bees have trichromatic, but they don't see red, they see UV instead. But what they can do is they can use these colors to find pollen. So they can find their, their food because different flowers have to have different colors and if flowers have these colors specifically to attract bees, right? So the colors of flowers are there to attract bees because in this case, it's a symbiotic relationship. Both the bee and the flower benefit. The bee gets the pollen and the actual flower gets its um, seed spread from one flower to the next, right? But the reason why these colors are there are simply to attract the bee. So basically the flower is giving a message to the bee, come and get me, like come and get my pollen. And at the same time, it will help it out by spraying the seed. Now the monarch butterfly, this is another good example of where vision is used to communicate. The monarch butterfly has certain patterns, these patterns. So you can usually tell if it's a monarch but butterfly by looking at these different patterns. But if, for example, a, a bird were to eat this butterfly. So a bird tries to eat it and it does achieve it, like he manages to eat it. What will happen is within 10 minutes it'll get quite sick, right? So the this is poisonous, the, the butterfly itself is poisonous, so this, the bird will become sick. And next time when it sees that same pattern on a butterfly, it will know if I eat this butterfly I'll become sick again, right? So basically this pattern from the monarch butterfly is used to warn off any predator because once they've eaten one of them once, they realize next time you eat me or eat someone of my family or my whatever, then you'll be sick again. Right? So this is a visual communication to the predator in this case. So it's used, visual communication is used between species, so between two members of one species, such as the peacocks, but also, be, but it's also between, uh, sorry, between and within. So between is the bird and the monarch butterfly. Monarch butterfly and the bird are two different species. So these are communications between species. And the peacock and and the male and the female peacock is within the species. So communications either within the species or between species. Both examples exist. Um, and our, another example with the humans, they often use color for lots of different communications. So for example, this, you can see these are the Germans and these back here are the Americans. I know that because I can look at the color of the uniform. Germans used to wear gray and Americans used to wear more like the brightish brownish color. So in war, for example, we have uniforms that communicate enemy from foe. Also in a soccer match, an AFL match, you've got the different jerseys. So you know the jersey, the bright green one is team A and the bright red one is team B. All right, so they can use that as a form of communication. Wedding dresses are usually white, so that could, that could, for example, tell people that white is a color of purity and love, right? So if you've got white, white on, that kind of gives a certain message. Also, if you've got white dress on that looks like this, you usually know it's a wedding dress because that communicates a message. Just like when you have a funeral, it's often really dark colors, black colors. That's the color of mourning, right? Like people are mourning someone's death. Um, but another example would be traffic lights. We've got green, red, and green, red, and orange, and we know that these colors stand for something. Green means go, red means hopefully stop soon, and red, sorry, <laughs> orange means hopefully stop soon, and red means stop. So we know that these colors mean something, and then we can use that as a form of communication. So that's what this basically stop means. We need to know that, okay, all many different animals have different color visions, and they will use that these color visions to communicate within the species, such as with humans in their uniforms, or the peacocks and their different types of feathers that attract their males, uh, the, the mates, so the females get attracted to males by their feathers, or it can be between species. So for example, 
bee and the flower or the monarch butterfly and its predators. They're different species, but at the same time they're communicating with one another using color as communication, as a source of communication. I hope that was useful.